Uh, it has not been often that we are able to hear from some of our own American Baptist missionaries. That is mainly because over the years, traditionally, our United Mission has gone to supporting them and we send them out. But in recent years, that has changed and uh, many of our American Baptist missionaries now are, are uh, needed to uh, raise their own support. And so we are so blessed to have uh, an American Baptist missionary named Jenny Podzinski and is one that I happen to be able to wholeheartedly endorse because I've known her for over 20 years. And if you see how old she is, that means that she was just a little girl when I first met her. <laughs> she was a member of our church in Michigan and uh, at eight years old and very soon after that she received a call to missions that she has followed through with and she's been all, almost 20 countries already and now is preparing to be commissioned by American Baptist International Missions to go to Thailand. And uh, Jenny, would you come and share with us about what's going on in your life? All right, check, check. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered and died because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still another seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. It is an enormous pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, as Pastor Scott said, um, I kind of know his family from a long time ago, and, uh, and you'll get to hear a little bit of, of what that looked like over, over the years, and I'm just going to tell you a story today. I'm going to tell you about myself, and as American Baptist churches partnering with American Baptist missionaries who come from your congregations, it's important that we know one another, that you know my name, and that hopefully I get to know your names. So that's a little bit about what today will entail. So my name is Jenny Podzinski, and this picture was taken in Niles, Michigan, where I grew up. Uh, and um, let's see, can we, uh, can we go ahead to the next slide? Okay, so most missionaries when they come to speak to your churches, they'll introduce you to their families, you know, show cute pictures of their kids. Well, I'm single and I don't have any children, so I brought you my baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I am the youngest of three daughters, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner with uh, my two older sisters on my first birthday. And I grew up in church, quite literally, and you can see down in the bottom right uh, that I have paid attention to scripture my entire life. Uh, uh, so my, my family was very active uh, in the church as I was growing up, and one of the roles that my mother played was on the mission committee. One year, our church in Niles decided to send a liaison to the World Mission Conference in Green Lake, Wisconsin. Well, that's a gathering, used to be an annual gathering of, of American Baptist missionaries, and churches could send people to meet and greet and catch up with and bring a report back to their churches about these missionaries. So my parents uh, were able to get the time off of work and decided to make that a family vacation. So. Off we went to Green Lake, Wisconsin, and uh, I was about 11 years old at the time. And we can go ahead to the next slide, Matt. The first event of that week was meeting all of the missionaries in a courtyard. And it was kind of like meet and greet here at the church, but it was just over the course of an hour or so. And, and I thought, a precocious little thing that I was, you know, these are the celebrities of the hour, and I am going to get their autographs. So I did. 
uh, I got my Bible and a pen, and I went around to all of these missionaries and got their autographs in my Bible. One of those missionaries' name was Peter Beckwith. And Peter is pictured here in this picture with me. The Holy Spirit prompted my father to take uh, a photo of that exact moment as Peter and I talked. Now, I talked to a lot of missionaries that day, but Peter took the time with an 11-year-old girl who couldn't give him any money or, uh, or contribute in any way to his ministry, took some time to answer my questions about why, why he was wearing a dress, first of all, uh, what a missionary was, and why in the world anybody would do that. So that 10 minutes uh, opened my heart to, to a whole new world. God was planting a seed in that time for mission in my life. So I proceeded for the rest of the week, that World Mission Conference, to basically stalk Peter and uh, uh, hid behind trees and darted behind bushes, and he noticed. Uh, so at the end of the week, he, he said, Jenny, I want you to meet me at the back of the hall after the plenary session. I have something to give you. And I thought, what does he have for me? Well, it turned out that he wanted to give me a Japanese coin. This is a five yen Japanese coin pictured there. And he pressed that coin into my hand and he said, Jenny, I just want you to be attentive to if God might call you to missions. And I put that coin on a chain and I wore it for years and years. Now I took Peter pretty seriously and uh, two years later, 13 years old, I heard about this short-term mission opportunity for uh, teenage girls. And so I filled out the application and got $50 out of my savings account and sent it in. Four weeks later, I get my acceptance packet kind of orienting to me, me to what we're going to be doing in the Dominican Republic. And uh, I decided at that point I should tell my parents that this is uh, happening this summer. Needless to say, I did not go on that trip. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand why. But uh, it took a few years before my parents were ready for me to go. And uh, let's go ahead to the next slide. This is a picture of me when I was 16, uh, praying with two girls in Swaziland to accept Christ as their savior. Uh, that was the first of many, many international trips. Uh, ranging in length from four weeks to ten months uh, overseas at a time. And during that period of, of high school, college, uh, I was exploring the call uh, just as Peter had invited me to do. Uh, I, like every young person, uh, I grew up, uh, graduated high school. We could go to the next slide. <laughs> This is, you know, this is the least incriminating photo I have. Uh, so you can pay me later, Goodman. <laughs> um, but, uh, but there were faithful people in my life, Sunday school teachers and camp counselors and uh, people who shook my hands every week at church as a person growing up in the faith and growing up, not just in church, but growing up in Christ. And those seeds uh, continued to bear fruit. So, um, you know, I graduated high school, I went on to college, and a funny thing happened. We can go to the next slide. I won the lottery. <laughs> no, I actually worked at a bank. <laughs> uh, but it's fun, right? Uh, no, I, I went on from college... Uh, continued to, to explore what does it look like God to serve you with my life and I wanted to spend some time just in the workplace getting work experience so I worked at a bank for two years and in two years I was promoted two times and I thought I could make a life out of this this isn't too bad at all I found a, a personal passion for finance that I didn't know I had and began using that passion uh, in uh, um, in my church as a, as a budget counselor, helping people uh, manage and eliminate their debt. And I thought, wow, God, I did not know you'd made this in me, and I love doing it. Well, I also had this coin burning a hole in my pocket, 
And even as I was getting settled in the United States and settled in a job that I loved, that I felt like God had equipped me and called me to do, I was a little confused. And uh, I wondered, Lord, call the mission, passion for personal finance and banking, I don't know how this is going to work out. What are these puzzle pieces that you have put in my life and how are they ever going to fit together? So I decided to do an experiment and I quit my job and moved to Thailand. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, now that tells you something about my personality. I'm just saying. Uh, this is not abnormal in my life. I'm a decisive person. So I spent five months in Thailand. This was probably my seventh time overseas. And, I, and in this time, I thought, Lord, I need, you, I need you to lead me so that I either love it and I can't live without it or I hate it and I can't, you know, I can't hack it. So I spent that time in Thailand. Let's go ahead to the next slide. Um, I spent that time in Thailand and I was, weighing, I was weighing these two paths. And we have American Baptist missionaries in Thailand and I just so happened uh, when I was traveling to renew my visa, uh, I stopped in to the New Life Center to visit with these missionaries and they invited me to tell them my story. So I told them the story that I just told you. I said, I'm at a fork in the road in my life and I don't know what to choose. God has gifted me in personal finance and, and administration, and has, but has given me a pastor's heart and, and, and a call to mission. And they listened intently and uh, lovingly and then they laughed at me. And they said, Jenny, you don't have to choose. If God has gifted you in these ways, God will make a place for you on the mission field to use those gifts. So they talked to me about their ministry as well, shared their stories of how God had brought them into the ministry. Uh, and they shared with me the story of the New Life Center. And I'll just tell you briefly about the New Life Center. Now at that time I had no intention or understanding that I would serve at the New Life Center, but let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a, it's a residential facility in northern Thailand that works exclusively with underage ethnic minority girls who are victims of forced labor, uh, domestic abuse, and sexual abuse. Uh, many of their cases are emergency cases where uh, a 13-year-old will come to the center after several years of being caught in an exploitative labor situation, whether that's in the sex trade or in a fish factory uh, or something along those lines. And this girl has, uh, was either f forced into that or, or came willingly not understanding what she was getting herself into. The New Life Center, some girls stay at the New Life Center for six months, stay, some say, stay for six years. And depending on their level of education, we offer a, kind of a homeschooling program. Some girls who come that are 15 years old went to school for one year in their whole lives so they can't read and write their own language. Uh, so we work with them until they're able to enter school at a, at a grade level that's comparable to their age. And then if they're able, uh, they enter the formal schooling system. Uh, we also teach them life skills, um, how to bake, how to sew. Uh, something that's very important in Southeast Asia is tribal embroidery and each tribe has its, uh, has its own um, cultural uh, way of, of embroidering things. And I have some samples for you in the back of, of the beautiful and intricate work that they do. So we teach them even, even to love their own heritage. And they're also given uh, therapeutic services. Uh, these girls are, uh, are showing off the products that they made during art therapy. You know, they answer through art questions like, um, what, what has this year been for you? Or what was it like to enter the New Life Center? Or what was your life like before you entered the New Life Center? And they do all kinds of projects. Uh, and one of our American Baptist missionaries, a very, very talented artist, is working at the New Life Center as an art therapist for these girls. Praise God. Uh, so, so they told me about the New Life Center, and I thought, well, that's great. And uh, I told them about my passion for personal finance and just very basic budgeting principles that had changed my life. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Uh, 
the missionaries, these two missionaries, invited me to give a personal finance seminar to the graduates of the New Life Center, some of whom are in university now and receiving a, a monthly stipend, uh, and to teach them a little bit about budgeting, how to control their money so that their money doesn't control them. So I did that for a day, and I could not believe uh, God opening this wide world of being able to use the puzzle pieces that didn't seem to fit in my life on the mission field. So while I was still in Thailand, Go ahead, Matt. Uh, I went ahead and started my application with American Baptist International Ministries. Now that was three years ago. Uh, and, uh, and I felt very confident and very comfortable right away that this was the path that God had ordained for me from years and years gone by. And God had worked this out unbeknownst to me, that God had been working the soil of my heart uh, without my even being aware. So, uh, during, that, during that application process, International Ministries said, probably going to be a good idea for you to get a graduate degree. You're fine to go to the mission field right now, but it will probably open doors for you in the future if you'll get this extra education. So, uh, so I started uh, a dual master's degree program in Philadelphia three years ago, and I will just be finishing up this December and hoping to go to the field soon after that, depending on where my fundraising is. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Uh, here about, well, it was May. It was May. After three years, I've gotten a Master's of Divinity and a Master's in International Development, and now is the time to look for a placement overseas. Lord, where are you calling me, and what, what job ha is going to pull together the puzzle pieces of my life? I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust that you're going to do it. And lo and behold, the New Life Center Board of Directors submits a missionary request to International Ministries requesting a senior administrator, uh, someone to, to do administrative work, chaplaincy, uh, financial literacy program, uh, and, uh, and uh, that arrived and, and somehow it got passed on to me and I picked my jaw up off the floor and, uh, and said, can I please be considered for this job? And, uh, Praise be to God. I don't. I don't know how how it worked out that that my exact skills were the exact request that the New Life Center made three years after I was there. Uh, but uh, that is the God we serve. So let's go ahead to the next uh, slide. Now remember, when we began, I read to you a parable from Mark four, a parable of the sower. Peter Beckwith, the missionary that I met when I was. 11 years old, spent 10 minutes with me, 10 minutes, and then he forgot about me. I mean, I didn't call him. I'm an 11 year old girl. We didn't keep in contact. Um, but, but that seed, um, Peter was faithful to plant that seed, five yen, just a little thing, a really simple little thing, five yen. 19, 17 years later, uh, if we could go ahead to the next slide. I was traveling as, a, as a, a missionary and raising support, and I was in Maine, and it turns out that Peter is now a pastor in Maine, and I was able to meet with him one day and tell him the story of God calling me into mission through 10 minutes that he didn't even remember, but that had changed my life definitively. And uh, I showed him the picture that I showed you earlier, and he said, well, I don't remember, but that's me, so I was there. <laughs> and he is holding in this picture a 500 real bill. Now remember, Peter had given me five yen. And while I was waiting at this restaurant for Peter to show up, God brought to mind this parable, that when we are faithful and trust God with our five yen, God can make 500 real from it. And because I was traveling, I just happened to have that bill with me. And when Peter sat down, I told him the story and I said, God wants you to know that God is multiplying your efforts in the world far beyond what you are even aware of. So as I see these children sitting in front, and, and as, I, as I look at you, the salt of the earth in Dayton, Ohio, the salt of the earth at Spinning Road Baptist Church, 
I want to encourage you buy this five yen and encourage you to invest in the little ways that God calls you at Awana. I'm a product of Awana. Let's, well, I could sing the theme song right now. Uh, <laughs> let's do it now. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide. So what does the road ahead look like? Well, I'll tell you one thing that I'm sure of. As a, sing as a young single woman, I do not want to walk this road by myself. No desire uh, to do that. And praise God, there is uh, a structure now of, of a model of support where I get to get to know my churches and my churches get to know me. Uh, and we actually have a relationship and walk this road together. Uh, in small and big ways, uh, there is a church in Wisconsin that sends me every year my multivitamins. And they're involved in, in very small ways in my life, but very practical ways. Um, they call me on my birthday, and they're supporting me financially. Um, from $5 a month, uh, there's a pastor in Rhode Island who, you know, her budget is stretched thin, and she's working on her own debt elimination plan. And she can spare $5 a month, and she sends it faithfully so that God can get me to Thailand and get me to the New Life Center to support those girls as they heal from the experiences they've had. All the way up to churches who support me for several hundred dollars a month. Uh, so let's go ahead to the next slide. Uh, these are options. Uh, I have prayer cards on the back table as you exit. I invite you to take one of those. It has my picture and on the back it has some information about the ministry that I'll be doing. Also has my email address and I would welcome your, your communications. I'm a very good communicator and faithful so if you write to me you will hear back. Uh, I also have a newsletter sign-up list, one on each side of the table with a pen there. I would love if you would put your name and email there. If you don't have an email, put your snail mail address. You're not going to hear from me as often. <laughs> um, but, but you will automatically, if you put your name on that list, receive my, uh, my periodic journals from International Ministries. And that's all. You won't get spammed. Just my journals. Um, so as a church, as a church, you can, my church in Pennsylvania, the one that I'm a member of, takes, just like you took your fellowship offering today, they take, once a month, they take uh, an offering for their missionaries, and they, they support two ABC missionaries, and whatever comes in that month, they split it between the two of us, and in that way, they're able to support us. Um, they support me in prayer. I have a prayer list that goes out, and, uh, and like I said, they just know, they know who I am. And that ministry of relationship, is really a beautiful, beautiful thing as I leave my family and leave, leave the things that are familiar to me for a long time. Uh, that, is, that is a dear and precious ministry to me, uh, your relationship. So uh, those are options. Let's go ahead to the last slide, Matt. Many of you uh, have heard the scripture, Psalm 4610, and could probably quote it without my putting it up here. We usually hear the first part of that verse, be still and know that I'm God. Did you know that that's not the entire verse? I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Uh, this, is, this is a missions verse. Um, and I, uh, I'd like to invite you now into a time of, of stillness and rejoicing in your soul that our God is God and that God will be exalted in the earth. 